When thinking about materials for product design or using them in our day-to-day -day lives, we expect materials to behave in a certain way, depending on how we're using them. Let's take, for example, a piece of paper. This is a piece of paper I use for my printer. It's relatively thin, so the printer doesn't jam. And I can use it with markers, color pencils, pens, that sort of thing. This piece of paper, on the other hand, is watercolor paper. Use it for art projects. It's significantly thicker than my printer paper, so it doesn't really fit in the printer, but it's great for use with watercolor paints and dip ink pens. But why? Well, these pieces of paper have different material properties. Material properties are traits that describe how material reacts or behaves under specific conditions or stimuli. In the case of my pieces of paper, my stimulus is the water used for painting. We can see here that the watercolor paper doesn't really warp or distort under the amount of water that I need to paint. The printer paper definitely distorts. These pieces of paper have different properties, so they perform differently. It means I use them in different applications. But water isn't the only stimulus I'm concerned about. Let's say I've applied a mechanical load or force to my material. This impact of mechanical loading is called mechanical properties. And it's one of the fundamentals of materials. It's often one of the first types of material properties that students learn about. How a material reacts to hot or cold? Thermal properties. An example of this is a material's melting point. How a material reacts in the presence of an electrical current? Electrical properties. Is my material transparent or opaque? Invisible light or infrared? These are optical properties. Is my material smooth or rough? Is it dull or shiny? These might be considered as aesthetic properties. And the list goes on. All of these different properties combine together to influence the performance of my material once it's been made into a different product. For the purpose of today's course, we're only going to focus on mechanical properties. As I said, it's fundamental, one of the first students learn about. If I'm thinking about applying a mechanical load to my material, I might think that I need a material that's strong. A material's strength is its ability to resist permanent distortion or total failure. Now this is important, but a material's stiffness or its ability to resist elastic or recoverable shape change is also important. Let's go back to our example of a piece of paper. If I have my two pieces of paper here, you'll notice that the printer paper sags under its own weight, whereas the watercolor paper really doesn't. This could be part of the reason that the watercolor paper is better under the presence of water. All I know is that the watercolor paper makes a significantly better homemade card than the printer paper. This elastic or recoverable shape change occurs when a load is first applied to a material, and this will be the focus of today's ANSYS innovation course. We'll define relevant terms for material elasticity, including Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. We'll identify stress-strain curves and investigate how they are useful in determining a material's elastic behavior. We'll look into atomic bonding and see how this influences our material elasticity will compute stress-strain values given relevant material information. And finally, we'll recognize the impact elastic behavior has on real-world design. My name is Dr. Caitlin Tyler, and I'll be your instructor for today's course. Thank you for joining me today, and let's get started.